Welcome, it's Zurika from Living an Amazing Life. In today's episode, we aim to break down the ethical hacks used in the book Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Greg mentions that you can do many things and be average across the board, or you can do a few things and be superb in it. Now, there are two core ideas that are the foundation of essentialism. Idea one, practicing saying no. Every time you say yes, you are basically saying no to many other things. At first, this looks like a non-trivial matter and saying yes can feel more comfortable than saying no. But when you dig deeper, you will get to see that the same yeses that you took are the reason why you're feeling successful or feeling like a failure. When we train our mind to say more no's than yeses, things happen differently. Idea two, we have too many choices. When we don't deliberately choose where to focus our energy and time, other people, such as our bosses, our colleagues, our clients, or even our families will choose for us. The book goes through three hacks that we need to master to have the essentialist approach. Hack one is explore. Hack two, eliminate. Hack three, execute. But before we dive into these hacks, if you're new to this podcast, then every episode on living an amazing life aims at breaking down ethical hacks used by world-class billionaires, entrepreneurs, scientists, doctors, Olympic athletes to reach their highest performance. We cover this as practical micro-lessons distilled in 20 to 30 minutes that you can embrace and implement in your own life to be a high performer. Now, before we dive right into the solutions of being an essentialist, it's important to recognize that we fall into a trap of saying yes to everything. It's a tactic that may have worked at one point, but most of the time, the same habit leads to failure. In the book, Essentialism, Greg mentions a term called learned helplessness, which is where we condition our mind to live in a negative way by believing that we have no other choice we forget our ability to choose. He explains learned helplessness with an example. An experiment was done on three groups of German shepherds. For our example, let's consider these groups as three individual dogs. Dog one, AJ, was placed in a harness and was given an electric shock, but AJ was also given a lever that he could press to make the shock stop. Dog 2, Charlie, was also placed in a similar harness and was also given the same lever. Charlie was also given the same shocks like AG. The only difference was that the lever that he was given to stop the shock did not work. This made Charlie feel powerless to stop the electric shock. Dog 3, Bella, Bella was also placed in the harness just like AJ and Charlie, but was not given any shocks. After some time of shocking AJ, Charlie and Bella, the same dogs were placed in a larger box with a low divider so that they can cross the box. One side of the box produced the electric shock and the other side did not. Here is what they discovered. Dog AJ, who had experienced the shock and had the ability to stop the shock, was quick and was able to step over the divider in the box so he could prevent being shocked. Dog Bella, who had not experienced any shocks in the previous experiment, was also able to quickly discover that moving to the other side of the box was advisable to prevent any shocks. But dog two, Charlie, who had not experienced a way to stop the shocks in the previous experiment since the lever was broken, 
had not learned to adapt or adjust. So what did Charlie do? He stood there not avoiding any way or not coming up with any way to stop the shocks. Why? Because Charlie did not know that he had a choice. This dog had embraced learned helplessness. This is the exact behavior that we as humans adapt to. If we try something and never get better, we eventually give up, believing that nothing we do will make us succeed in this specific task. Let's look at how the same learned helplessness creeps into our life. If you work in an office where there is a lot of backstabbing and manipulation, then every project you work on becomes the norm that every person working on that project will be manipulators and the environment feels infested. If we don't stop and believe we have a choice, we will get sucked into that infested environment for years, thereby compromising on our life and well-being. We come to accept that there is no choice and we have to live with it. We first need to realize that we have a choice in every circumstance. We have to recognize the trade-offs in every situation. Instead of falling into the trap of short-term gains, we must look beyond these gains and look to see how our choices can have an impact long-term. Greg says, it's easy to say yes to everyone's demands as it allows us to feel like we are being heroes. But the impact of this behavior brings about dissatisfaction in the long term. I shall give you another example in my own personal life. I always said yes to my family's wants in terms of material things they asked of me and delayed savings and investing. While all my other friends were saving for a down payment for their own house or investing in property, I would use my savings to cater to material demands of my family. I felt uneasy to say no to my family's requests or to my friends' requests. I felt like I would be considered mean and selfish. I had fallen into the trap of learned helplessness. I felt I had no choice but to work hard and give the people that mattered irrespective if their wants were irrational. I did this for years and delayed saving and investing to create true wealth for my family. Now I look back at the wants that I said yes to. These wants were not life-threatening. Instead, they were instant gratifications that my friends and family members demanded of me. Now I want you to reflect and see what you may be doing to embrace learned helplessness. You need to recognize that in every situation, no matter how difficult it may look, you have the ability to choose. As an essentialist, you have to look at all the options and ask some key questions. First, what's the trade-off that I'm willing to make for saying yes? Second, what is the core problem I want to solve? In my case, to be an essentialist, the core problem I wanted to solve was my ability to have a recurring source of cash flow. The trade-off I had to make were, first, saying no to expensive gifts that my family wanted to gift to others to show we were well off. Second, saying no to friends' demands at going out partying every weekend. Third, saying no to filling my day with tasks just so that I can feel I am busy. Fourth, saying no to spending time with members of the family who had no respect for me as a person and felt entitled to treat me any way they felt like it due to a culture. Fifth, saying no to spending on constant takeouts, rather learning to cook at home while enjoying the process. Sixth, saying no to subscriptions and things presented to me on social media to buy. 
At first, these were hard to say no to. But over time, I saw the positive side of this habit. Greg speaks about Warren Buffett as an essentialist. Warren Buffett earlier on in his investment career knew that if he needed to be wealthy, he would have to make a few trade-offs. He recognized that it would be virtually impossible for him to make hundreds of right investment decisions. So instead of trying to invest small amounts in different companies, he took the approach to invest larger amounts in a selected few companies that he was absolutely sure about. Did you know that Warren Buffett owns 90% of his wealth to 10 investments? Greg says that we must learn the art of saying no to all opportunities that rank 7 and 8 and only say yes to the opportunities that rank 9 and 10s in our life. When you say no to one thing, you automatically make room to and time to say yes to something else. Through practicing essentialism, you can bring a completely new way of living. In fact, through essentialism, you can completely change the destiny of your business and make it profitable. There are three areas that you need to master to embrace essentialism. Definition, which is to create a new meaning in your mind to the word no. New habits, learn and adapt new habits to stick to the essentials. Prioritize, protect yourself to prioritize every decision you decide to say yes to. When you learn to say no, it's important to understand that when you are saying no, you are saying no to the request, not to the person asking for that favor. Me, we must learn the art of not feeling guilty. Next, you have to realize that in the world we live in, everyone is selling you on an idea or a request. Saying no does not mean that you're rejecting the offer and that you are bad or that you are selfish or that you cannot afford it. This guilt is outdated in the world we live in. If we want to live a relaxed life, it's essential to say no. Otherwise, you will die another form of death. A death that robs you of your time to live a carefree life. By saying yes to many things, you will fill your day with dissatisfaction and rob yourself of looking after your own well-being. You will die a death of exhaustion, burnout, lifestyle diseases, disharmony in your family, and so much more. So how can you be an essentialist and adapt a new way of living? You have got to embrace these three hacks. Hack one, explore. Hack two, eliminate. Hack three, execute. Now let's break down these hacks. Hack 1. Explore. To master this hack, you must learn the art of escaping. You have to make others aware that you will be intentionally unavailable. Don't worry if these others are okay with it or not. This is your decision. This is the time where you can create, you can concentrate and you can design the life that you want to live. Adopting the deep work method by Carl Newport is the way to go. To help you use this method, I've made a 20-minute summary of his book. The deep work method will help you strengthen how you prioritize your day and overcome learned helplessness. You can find the deep work method in the list of podcasts released by Living an Amazing Life, either on iTunes, Google Podcast, or by visiting livinganamazinglife.com. Now, each day, for the next 30 days, write down everything you did for that day. Be ruthless and write everything down. This will allow you, in 30 days, to pick the learned helplessness habits that you have allowed to creep into your life. Next, for the explore hack 
to become a habit in your life, you have to give time to playing. I know this is sounding rather ridiculous, but this could be the best thing that you can do is to pick up a new sport or take an existing sport, a hobby that will allow you to relax and allow you to be creative. It's also crucial to sleep and rest. Do not deprive yourself of sleep. Sleep affects our judgment and our awareness. The less sleep we give ourselves, the more non-essential items will creep into your life as you lose focus and again get back into the habit of saying yes to any and everything. Hack two, which is eliminate. Here we need to learn to become editors of our life after mastering being journalists. For this hack to take effect, you must be comfortable to quickly edit and eliminate things that are not serving you. Practice pausing and gracefully saying no to requests that come your way. When someone asks you to do something, take the time to pause and think this through before giving an answer. It's always tempting to say yes. If you feel like buying something, pause and take time to analyze how this thing will help you in your life. Practicing the power of pausing for a few minutes before saying yes, it gives you time to think through the trade-offs you will have to make in your day. Remember, for every yes you make, you are saying no to something else. The way to start with elimination is to create boundaries for yourself in your life and in your work. Set some rules. Remember, you always have a choice to edit these rules. Making rules to start the elimination process is important. This in turn will give you a sense of freedom. Hack three, execution. For this hack to take effect, you must look at how you can remove obstacles that may come your way while practicing essentialism. Instead of making this a difficult practice and requiring willpower, you must look at how you can create small actionable systems that you can implement in your life. In the book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams, he outlines the key principles of setting up systems. And again, you will find a 20-minute summary audiobook summarized that you can listen to on Living an Amazing Life podcast. So there you have it. To be an essentialist in life, in your career, and in your business, first, what can you say no to so you can create time to do the things that will give, get you closer to your dream? Second, always remember you have a choice and do not embrace learned helplessness. Third, be a journalist and start to document what you can do each day for 30 days. Fourth, practice being an editor. Edit and update where you can invest your time. Fifth, practice the power of pausing for a few minutes before saying yes. Sixth, make room to play so you can ignite the creative aspect of your mind. Seven, take the time to rest and sleep each day. Eight, allocate time each day to focus on the priorities of your life using the deep work method. Nine, create systems and work with systems, just like Scott Adam states in his book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then here is what I request of you. For the next 30 days, become a journalist and write down how you spend your time for the day. Pause before saying yes to any request. Reflect if this yes is worth it and what you would need to trade off for this yes. Pick a game or a hobby that you promise yourself to indulge with because this will help you in your creativity. 
always take time to rest and to sleep and adopt and embrace deep work. Billionaires and high performers have mastered this method. If you find my work valuable, then do subscribe to our podcast either on iTunes or on Google Podcast. You will find benefit. The podcast is called Living an Amazing Life. Just Google it as one word. We are also on YouTube. Again, the channel is called Living an Amazing Life. I think it's better if you just use it as one word rather than have spaces in between. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and you embrace essentialism. I thank you and I look forward to spending time with you in our next episode. I wish you the most amazing day. I wish you the best in life. See you soon. Ciao for now. Take care.